The FTC Cars Rule Delay serves to bring out the worst in some dealers. No kidding. Multiple messages are coming in from viewers all over the country. One in particular that we've been bombarded with is Greensboro Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and missing today with a sore throat is the amazing Elizabeth. Today, I'm about to share with you one of the most outlandish stories we've heard from our viewers since publishing videos on YouTube. Here's part of the problem. The unfortunate pause of the FTC cars rule has generated significant discussion about its impact on car dealers and the broader automotive finance industry. The cars rule, which was finalized back on December 12, 2023, and initially set to take effect on July 30th, 2024, aims to enhance transparency and fairness in car buying and leasing processes by imposing several obligations on dealers. These obligations include prohibiting misrepresentations regarding material information about a vehicle, requiring clear disclosure of the offering price, and mandating specific financing disclosures. Additionally, the rule targets the sale of add-on products that provide no benefit to consumers and imposes a two-year record-keeping requirement on dealers. Lastly, the rule also clearly calls out that an advertised price of a vehicle must be the full cash price or however any buyer would like to pay for the vehicle. However, the FTC issued an order on January 18th, 2024, staying the effective date of the rule to allow for a judicial review following a legal challenge by some industry groups. These groups, largely the scumbags at NADA, argued that the rule was arbitrary, capricious, and abuse of discretion and issued without observance of procedure required by law, something that could actually describe dealers' actions all around the country. NADA specifically states that the rule is illegal, as if to say the activities that the CARS rule bans are not illegal, when we all know that a ton of what dealers do is illegal, like this story today. It's total BS. There's no way any viewer in our audience agrees with NADA's claims on the CARS rule being illegal. Now, let's step away from this FTC analysis and look at what's happening right now with a very unscrupulous car dealer out there. And no, this is not the only one. Just a heads up to those of you living in North Carolina, you might not want to patronize any of your local dealers because there are tons of documentary reports coming out of NC about unscrupulous dealers. I guess birds of a feather actually do hang together. This story is among the most appalling we've heard since broadcasting on YouTube. Let's first hit on the nonsense going on at Greensboro CDJR, first reported on two YouTube creators' channels, TK's Garage, and then Buttered the Insider followed up on it, talking about Greensboro's mistreatment of a customer named Brandt, and then the forgery of his signature after he ordered a Demon 170. They even went so far as to notarize the forged signature, and then the notary misspelled Brandt's name. All of the supporting documentation is there. Brandt wrote a complaint about Greensboro on January 29th to the Better Business Bureau. It reads, I ordered a Demon April 8th, 2023. Took a deposit. Ordered my car wrong. Never made changes by cutoff. Promised to give me a price break. Before the car came in, they told me they would not renegotiate the price. No surprise there. Had to file a dispute to get my money. In the process of filing charges and going to sue. Dirtbags describes them best. The Better Business Bureau posted the complaint. The dealer responded with a comment most likely written by an attorney. It's full of the legal abuse of the English language designed to confuse readers while providing no real dispute of the facts. It reads, Dealership management completely disagrees with the characterization of facts in this comment and believe it to be filled with untruths and mischaracterizations. Greensboro CDJR prides itself on its leading customer service. <laughs> Sounds like Andy Elliott, right? Using the words customer service as if it means something while it actually means customer disservice. Look at the words, friends. The response doesn't say the facts are not the facts. It says they disagree with the characterization of the facts. A big distinction. But the facts are still the facts. It goes on to say, we believe it to be filled with untruths and mischaracterizations. This is the legal abuse of language that does nothing to say the statement isn't true. Remember the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case? The use of the word mischaracterization was used frequently to respond to facts that incriminated Amber. This dealer statement starts with, we believe. The truth is that they could believe anything, including not believing that they are dirtbags. The entire mischaracterization is related to the fact that the customer says the dealer is a dirtbag. A characterization is the creation or construction of a fictional character, like a dirtbag.
<laughs> Most importantly is what it does not say. It does not say we deny these charges. The statement is false. Now, why don't they say this? Because the truth is that they are likely facing criminal charges. Most likely the person who fraudulently signed the documents and also the person who fraudulently notarized the documents. Well, somebody is going to be arrested and charged in the end. The customer is very savvy in this case and has it all documented with text messages with the dealer. The funny part is that the customer's first name is actually spelled Bryant, B-R-A-Y-A-N-T. Then when they forged his document, they misspelled his name using Bryant. This dealer is screwed. Now, if this wasn't enough, the Better Business Bureau is loaded with complaints about this dealer all throughout 2023. If you remember, friends, we discussed in a video how to find a better dealer not long ago. It's right here. We said the dealer must score a 4.4 or higher. There's a reason for this. Look at this dealer sitting at a 4.2, and they are terrible. There are tons of clues of very unhappy customers. Many of the bad reviews have zero response from the dealership, a huge red flag. Take a look at a sample of some of these, and then here's a review by Sheldon Scott that details a ton of problems. He didn't get his title. He mentions repeatedly being lied to. There was a period of time he couldn't drive his car because the tags were expired. And then he later finds out the vehicle had been in an accident, a fact, not disclosed to him at the time of purchase. He concludes his review by saying, this is a shady dealership and I hope they get what is coming to them. We totally agree. Well, Sheldon, they are getting roasted all over YouTube. We hope this helps and a special thank you to YouTube creators known as TK's Garage and Buttered Insider for their coverage of this story. Make sure you check both of these creators out. Great guys. This is exactly the kind of nonsense we hoped to save you from when we started the Homework Guide channel. It's why we exist, and it's totally why we have launched our wholesale car purchase program recently on behalf of our subscribers. We couldn't have saved this guy because we're not talking about new cars, but many of you used car buyers will have the chance to get around used car dealers with our help. If you want to know exactly what I'm talking about, go back and see this video titled Buy at Wholesale Prices and then reach out to us if you're interested. For those of you who have heard about our fabulous membership program, you can sign up by clicking that join button right below the video or by texting Elizabeth at 701-441-3399 and she'll send you a link. Thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back and a special thank you to all of our longtime subscribers out there. You guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off on behalf of the Homework Guy team. And yes, we are serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We are leading the way to a whole new car business model. But for now, I've got to go.